and the College of Education Academic Staff Union, COESU, has said that its members are not ready to return to school anytime soon except the federal government upgrades institutions for conducive learning. The president of COASU, Nuhu Ogirima, made this known in an interview on Wednesday. The union's position comes a day after the Academic Staff Union of, Uni of Polytechnics, ASUP, corroborated the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU's stance that there are no provisions to meet COVID-19 precautionary guidelines in universities, polytechnics and colleges of education. We're now joined by educationist Dr. Peter Oguduru and Mary Ohagwashi. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure to join. I'm going to kick off with uh, Dr. Peter. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and of course the uh, Polytechnic Lecturers have refused to resume. And now, Colleges of uh, Education Lecturers are uh, following the same path. What is your take on this? Now, if you don't mind, please, can you take it again? It doesn't seem to be very clear to me. Maybe the next. Uh, I'm asking why you feel um, ASU lecturers and, of course, uh, those in polytechnics also have refused to resume um, um, schools. Um, and now the same thing is happening with College of Education lecturers. Why do you think that might be happening? Well, certainly, um, the, 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 those, those uh, academics are saying that from every available evidence, they have no reason to believe that um, their safety has been uh, adequately catered for by their employer. And they are insisting that adequate provisions must be put in place by the people who employ them before they can return to the classroom. Because see, nobody wants to go to the classroom and return home with, um, you know, coronavirus, uh, spread it around the home, infected and, and, and damaged the health of other members of the family. And uh, if you do research like me in the education industry, you will have reason to believe that, uh, especially public uh, 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 educational institutions, uh, are places where nobody has thought through uh, what needs to be in place. Uh, for uh, the safety of, 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 of students and, 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 and the people who teach them to, to be adequately you know, protected. So I think that's, that's the fear that is um, at, the, at, 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 the, uh, at the back of what, what, what happened there. I do not blame them. I think that we need to work harder as, as a government to improve the conditions that will give this people the confidence to return to the classroom. But for the private sector, uh, maybe uh, a, a few of them have subsidized the putting of money. Okay, but the students seem to disagree with these lecturers. Um, the argument is that if markets can reopen churches, primary and secondary schools, uh, then of course why not um, uh, let uh, the universities also reopen? Um, what, what would you respond to that? The students are students. They are not as informed as the people who teach them. They are not researchers. They don't have the intellectual tools to understand uh, the adverse implications of, uh, of, of, of their returning to school at this, at, at this point in time. And so, not you, they are, they, most of the people we are referring to are, are, are minors. They don't have the capacity to be able to anticipate the challenges they are going to face when they return to the classroom. So, the people who teach them, um, have a moral responsibility to compel their employer to put uh, adequate conditions in place before they can, before they can return to the country school. Uh, and as you know, uh, being young people and given the fact that they live in a country where certificates everything, um, their uh, brains are governed essentially by the need to return to school so that they can finish and acquire the certificates which will have made them believe is the only thing they need, they need in life to succeed. But we do know. Uh, for you to even utilize their certificate, you have to face their life. And that's what the electorate are, are, are talking about. So we should, uh, the, 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 the thinking of, of, of children should not override the thinking of adults. All right. And then now um, I want to quickly then speak to uh, Mary Ohagwashi. Um, if you've been following the conversation, most of the complaints by these lecturers um, have been about infrastructural deficit. Do you believe that these you know, things can be fixed in the nearest future or as quickly as possible? Well, uh, what we are seeing actually is uh, COVID-19 has um, opened our eyes to our unpreparedness for a modern education in Nigeria. And uh, it's not going to be a quick fix actually, because these are decades 
of neglect we are seeing, and we're looking at six months, it's not going to be enough. So there, there will be a, a, a short-term plan and a long-term plan. At the immediate, they should see how we can follow the guidelines and get our children back to school. They have been away from school for six months, and it impacting on them negatively. And there are other underlying issues going on in the lives of these children. So let's find a way to go around it. All the things they are asking for, the truth is that government doesn't have the means to provide it all at once. But let them do the needful and get the children back to school. Because the truth is that in the next two years, we are here with the COVID-19. That's the truth. So let's just see how we can get around it and get the children back to school so that they can finish up. Because many children have been impacted by staying at home. So that's the truth. We can't, it's not a quick fix. We need time to fix the problem of Nigerian education, which has been accumulating over the decades. So it can't be solved in months. It can't be solved. Do, do you think that it is um, fair to ask for the government and, of course, these uh, lecturers to get to a negotiating table and agree on a smooth process with which, you know, these things can be put in place, the infrastructural deficit and the things that they seek to enable them go back to school? Definitely, there should be a win-win. They, they should be at the same page. You can't force them back to the classroom. We're talking about the safety of these lecturers and their families. They cannot jeopardize their lives because they want to teach. And even the children, they also jeopardize the life of their own parents too if they go back to the classroom. So there should be you know, a win-win how to go about it, at least minimally, let us get our schools ready for these children to go back to school. All right, and, and just before we go back to Dr. Peter, I'm still with uh, Mary Ohagwashi. I want to know about the option of resuming in batches, like allowing the final year students and even maybe graduating students to resume first. I think it's okay. So the, let's let's see the impact. Let, let's not, not just throw all our children out there. Let's let's start there and let's see how it goes. I think it, it's better to err at the side of caution and safety. So let's allow the uh, older children who are matured, who can manage themselves to go first. Let's see how it goes and gradually get everybody back to school. And I, I think you should do it immediately. All right. And now moving back to Dr. Peter Ogudoro, I, I want to get your thoughts on where the lecturers should be channeling this uh, complaints to. Should it be to the federal government or should it be to the university and, and the, the vice chancellors and the likes um, who you know, maybe should have been able to create some of these conducive environments for learning over time? No, the university uh, vice chancellors have no capacity to it. To, to put um, necessary conditions in place. They, are, they, are, they themselves are employees of, of, of the government that they call the university, the federal and state government. And so uh, the lecturers are not wrong in, in insisting that the federal government must put uh, the necessary conditions in place before they can return to the classroom. And they know, really, you, they own the school. <laughs> and so if they haven't provided money, the vice chancellors cannot uh, uh, create infrastructure. Uh, with sand. This, it takes resources to put those kinds of things in place. Uh, but beyond infrastructure, I, I'm also aware that the major challenge we have had this part of the country always assume that all our problems will disappear the moment money arrives. We know from experience that that is not the truth. What we lack is skill. What we lack is the right values. What we lack uh, is the right knowledge. And so I think that uh, if we are wise, uh, given the fact that uh, no matter how, for how long we wait, we are not likely to find all the resources, give you the fact that this is the poor country. We might have to uh, get creative, get smart, and, and demonstrate wisdom by way of investing heavily in training um, the, uh, all the stakeholders in the education industry, including parents, on how to navigate uh, these stormy uh, waters in a way that will uh, give us uh, the minimal conditions we, we, we need to be able to return to school, really. But I, I haven't seen any, uh, any emphasis be placed on training. If we train our children and train the teachers and, of course, train their parents and the non-academic staff, we might be able to find uh, a compromise uh, approach to, to getting the children back to school. We are a country where people don't place value on, on, on learning. We don't place value on training. And until we begin to uh, uh, emphasize the value of, of, of training people appropriately, we will continue to have this kind of challenge. 
that's 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 my take on that. Now, I'm, I I research in the industry, and I know that uh, this we have been discussing this for for several months, but that there is no organized approach to get the children to understand even what is happening. Everybody hears about coronavirus, and then we talk about COVID-19. Every Nigerian child doesn't know the difference between the two, and uh, doesn't even hasn't understood the meaning of coronavirus. And their teachers just uh, you know make noise on on the internet, and nobody has trained them on how they should behave when they return to the classroom. I go you know to places and I work with teachers on on the various platforms. I, at the moment, I, I'm I'm working with over 24,000 teachers who come from every state of the federation. From what I can see, it's very obvious that most of them are not very knowledgeable regarding what the challenges associated with coronavirus are. And, uh, be, and this is because nobody has made a deliberate trend on oh. how to behave when they return to the classroom. So if we invest in training, the teachers probably might be able to cope better. If we invest in training, the children might be able to cope when they return to the classroom. If we invest in training, we might be able to prepare their parents on how to collaborate with the school system to okay. ensure that even if we are not able to put all the conditions in place in terms of infrastructure, we might be able to get away, you know, with uh, minimal conditions. And that way we can fund it. All right. Uh, final question. Uh, I'm going to send this one back to uh, Mary Aguashi. Uh, I want to get um, quickly what you think or what lessons you think we must learn from this period of a lockdown. And of course, uh, students have been at home for months and months now. What lessons do you think the country must learn and quickly act upon? Well, what I would say is that um, this uh, lockdown has shown us that um, looking at our education, we need to do something more about it to make it more functional. We should be more prepared. Like what ha happened has shown our level of unpreparedness, you know, and uh, prepare, be more proactive, and uh, be more creative, just like Mr. Dr. have said, be more creative, uh, we, we don't have so much resources, but with the little we have, we can make a difference. And then uh, prepare our children for a competitive global age. Um, and then make our institutions more, uh, more conducive and more attractive for people to stay. Look at lecturers refusing to go back to the classroom after staying six months at home. That means there's something fundamentally wrong with our educational system. So it's not going to be a quick fix, as I said before, the stakeholders should sit down and strategize how to solve permanently the problem of learning in, in Nigeria. And sincerely speaking, education future as a nation. So there's no way we can economize on education. Let's face it, let's fix it, let's solve it. That's my only take. Dr. Peter Ogudoro and uh, Mario Hagwashi, thank you both for speaking with us this morning. Looking forward to another conversation. It's a pleasure.